Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start authorizing your users using policies and custom business logic, also known as requirements in ASP.NET Core. I've already covered two other topics on the same exact subject, that is authorization, and those topics are roles and claims. You can click or tap on the right top corner of your screen right now if you want to watch those other videos, and please subscribe for more content like this. So the first thing I want to do is remove the previous authorization. We used roles in the previous video. You can catch that, as I said. And those were just roles, nothing custom in terms of policies here. So if I just remove that uh, from my uh, endpoints and my controller, that should be fine. Now my application doesn't use any authorization, just authentication. And this topic is actually very, very simple. ASP.NET Core makes it so, so easy for us to add custom business logic in our authorization. Let me just give you an example of what we're trying to achieve now. Now, let's say if I'm an admin or a member of a website, those things can be authenticated using just a role or a claim. But what happens if you want more complicated stuff? Like if I've been a member of this website for X amount of time, this is where things get more complicated. And in this case, we need authorization requirements and authorization handlers. And I'm just going to show you how we can do that right now. First things first. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name it authorization. And in there, I'm going to create a new class and this class will be named uh, works for company requirement. And the type of authorization we're going for here is we're going to check the email of each user who's trying to use an endpoint. And if the email ends on a very specific domain, then that means that they work for a specific company and we're going to allow them to use it. So for my case, my website is chaps.com. Uh, go check my blog if you want as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that if the email of this user ends with chaps.com, then I allow this user to actually use this endpoint. It's uh, that simple. So we're going to make our requirement class and we need to implement an interface. And that interface is I authorization requirement. And we're going to make a constructor and I'm going to create a property with just a getter. And I'm going to name this property, it's going to be a string and I'm going to name it domain name. And then this requirement will also have a string called domain name. Did I just type main here? That's wrong. Name. And I'm going to say domain name equals domain name. And this is all for our requirement. Now we also need another class and this class is called works for company handler. So there's a set of things we need for this. We need requirement and we need the handler. And the handler will be extending the class authorization handler. And here's where we're gonna use our requirement in this generic type parameter. So we're gonna say works for company requirement. And we're gonna implement the missing members and the missing member is the handle requirement async method. So we're going to delete this throw statement and we are going to say this context gives us access to uh, many things and it allows us to succeed or fail the request based on the requirements that we have. In this scenario, I want to check the email of the user. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say user email address and then context dot user. And then I'm going to put a question mark because this could be null, I think, just in case. And then we can say find first value. And now what this will do is it's going to look for a claim in the user. And this claim is coming from the JWD token. And I'm going to say claim types dot email. So we're going to be looking for the email claim. Uh, the reason why I'm not using the JWT registered name class, I'm using the claim types is because when you just have email in the JWT, Donut Core will actually recognize this as its own email claim. And if I go into the sources, you'll see that this is what we are going to see in our code, even though it's just the field email, literally the string email there. So in order to recognize it, we need to use this. And I'm gonna use this null collation thingy to just say string.empty, which means that find the user uh, email in the token. If it doesn't exist, return empty. And then I'm going to say, if user email address dot ends with, and then I'm going to say requirement dot domain name. So if the domain name of the email 
is what this email address coming in ends with, then context dot succeed with this requirement. And we're going to return task dot completed task. If that's not the case, then I'm going to say context dot fail, so unauthorized, and then return task dot completed task. So in terms of our logic, this is all we need. You could, of course, complicate this even more and you're free to inject other services if you need more complex logic. But for this example, I just want to keep it simple. So if the email ends with something I specified in the requirement, then authorize me. If not, reject me. Another thing we need to do is we're going to go to the MVC installer and I am getting several messages in terms of why uh, I call this installer and why I put this here and not in the startup.cs. I'm going to link now on the third video of the series talking about how we cleaned up our startup by separating the concerns. So you can click on that and see why we did that. But so for this one, we're going to find the ad authorization method. And what we're going to do is we're going to say options. And I'm going to say options dot add policy and I'm going to add a custom policy and I'm going to say must work for uh, chapters, which is uh, me. And then policy in this Lambda expression, I'm going to say policy dot requirements dot add. You can also say just add requirements really. And I'm going to say new works for company requirement and I'm going to put the chapsus.com domain there and I'm going to um, finish that line and then underneath that I'm going to say services.add singleton and I'm going to say I authorization handler comma and then we need the handler we created so works for company handler. This is all the code we need to add a custom uh, requirement in our custom policy. So if I go to the tags controller now, I can say authorize policy. And I'm going to use the name I created here. So if I just copy this and paste it here, that's all we need now. Now this endpoint will require this policy and this policy requires you to have an email that ends with chapters.com. Let's go ahead and test that and see how it works. So I have my Swagger interface here and I can go to login and I'm going to use the test at Gmail account that we made before. And I'm going to get a JWT. And I'm going to log in here. So this is the test at Gmail account ends with Gmail. So it's not chapters. So when I, when I say ASD, ASD uh, tag and I try to delete it, if I paste this here, I should get 403 because my email doesn't end with chapters, so this is unauthorized. As you can see, the other tag-related controllers are still working fine. I can still get all the tags here and I, I can create new. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to log out. And what I want to do is I want to register with an account that ends with chapters. So test at chapters.com and same password just for testing. So I'm copying this token here. Let me just close that. And then if I go down here and I say bearer, if I could type it properly and authorize. Now my account email ends with chapters.com. So if I execute this, sure enough, 204, it's deleted successfully. And if I try to list everything, you can see that this tag is no longer there. It's literally that simple to add custom business logic to our custom policies. Of course, in this custom policy, you could say, let me just stop debugging. You could say policy dot add other requirements, or you can also say require role, require claim, require assertion. There's so many things you can combine into a single policy. There is yet another way to do uh, this way of custom business logic authorization authentication, and this can be done with attributes. However, this is not something I wanna cover in this video. If you do want me to see covering this, please leave a comment right below and I will create a video for that. This is all I had for today, quite a short video. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.